Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who were well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, video uh, going into something this guy brought up at the camp. All right, we call him Mr. I Don't Know. <laughs> All right, he pretty much went to every camp Friday, even uh, the pre shar He goes out earlier in the day on Friday. He went up to his camp, and he came out later on and went up to the camp where the Apostle Rakha was. Then as we were closing up, he comes up to us pretty much uh, trying to establish that same Christian rhetoric. Everybody can be saved. You know, the Gentiles... Every time you see that word, is speaking of actual heathen. And uh, he just lacks the Holy Spirit. Um, so this brother, uh, Yawan, the priest Yawan here, GMS Yawan is his page, subscribe and be edified. He uh, did a video, you know, cutting this guy up. He had a fourth place ribbon in his pocket, showing you had been losing the whole damn day. All right. Um, and pretty much... All Jake wants to do is figure out a way to save Esau. You know, the fact that we're cursing Esau out and telling him his kingdom is going down, you know, um, that really affects Jake. Even though we teach that you do have particular Israelites that are going to look like heathen, Jake wants Esau, Edom, to be saved. Now, I'm not going to go into this video per se, but as he was out there, um, we brought up the point that Yahweh Shai was healing Israelites. And he said, I have proof that it, no, he was healing heathen. You know, and um, I wanted to uh, go into that topic um, because we always hear Yahweh Shai, all right, um, like here in Luke 14 and 13 at the bottom of the screen, you see it says, But when you make it the feast called the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, all right? And you see that narrative pretty much surrounding Yahweh Shai's walk, all right, as he was healing the lame, the blind, the maimed, okay? Right here in Matthew, the 15th chapter, and the great multitudes came unto him, having them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and, ca and, and cast them down at Yahweh Shai's feet, and he healed them, all right? Now, why is this important, all right, that you understand why they were being called lame, blind, and dumb, all right? Because when you go to the technicalities of that first covenant, all right, if you were lame, blind, dumb, or maimed, all right, Pretty much, you couldn't enter into the holy place. All right, here we have a law. Let's go here into uh, Leviticus 21. Now, this is speaking of the high priest. All right. This is Leviticus 21 and 17. Speak unto Aaron, who was the high priest at that time. All right, along with his sons. Said, whoever be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. All right. And, you know, <laughs> we ain't going to even go there. It says, so let's read this again. Say unto Aaron, whosoever be of thy seed in, in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be, that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. Okay, meaning you couldn't partake of the holy things as a high priest if you were what? A, bl a blind man or a lame or hath a flat nose or anything superfluous, meaning deformed. Okay? Or a man that is broken footed or a man that is broken handed or a crook backed. All right, if we go to. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, all right, a man that was wounded in his stones, meaning you had issues in your, uh, you know, your scrotum sack, you couldn't enter into the congregation, 
All right, you had all of these technicalities. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Deuteronomy 23. And we'll, we'll bring it out home in just a minute, but let's get Deuteronomy 23 and 1. Okay, regulations concerning worship. He that is wounded in his stones, all right, or hath his privy member, his penis cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So if you had, you know, issues in your, your, your testicles, all right, or if you had your rod cut off, you couldn't enter into the congregation of the Lord, okay? So there were, you know, these technicalities, all right, you would, there were these technicalities under that first covenant, as you can see, if you were blind, you're lame, you had a flat nose, or if you had a broken footed or crook back or a dwarf, meaning you were a midget, or had the blemish in his eye, or be scurvy or scabbed, or have his stones broken, his testicles damaged. All right, let's say you have a brother who has prostate issues or, or, or you know, testicular cancer and it, you know, that would keep you from being a, a priest back then. Okay? Meaning you couldn't partake of the holy things. All right? No man that had the blemish of the seed of Aaron. All right? The priest shall come nigh to offer of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. He shall eat of the bread of his God, but of the most holy and of the holy, only he shall not go into the veil nor come into the altar because he hath a blemish, all right, that he profane not my sanctuaries for the for I the Lord do sanctify them, all right, and this was said unto Mo this was said unto uh, Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel, so to be a priest. Under that first covenant, okay, these deformities and things, all right, did what? They blotted you out, okay? If you were leprous, you know, you had to be cleansed. All of these things, you know, ultimately, uh, as we reading, kept you from being a priest. Now, under the priesthood, all right, of Melchizedek, which is through Yahawashai, all right, you can be cleansed from those, from those things and offered... And welcome in, all right, as we're making our body a living sacrifice, okay? So when you go into the term, the the uh, the lame, let's go back, the blind, okay? You couldn't even offer up a sacrifice if it had deformities, all right? But here it is, we in an uncircumcised state, all right, the, you know, what would infirmities, deformities, all kinds of stuff, all right, under grace, all right, through the mercies of David, we're now able to offer up a sacrifice and partake in the holiest of things through Yahweh Shai. This is Job 29 and 15. I was eyes to the blind and feet I was to the lame. And that's all, you know, ultimately in spirit, that's through the preaching of the word through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's get this in the book of Jeremiah 31 and 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, which is here in Babylon the Great, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame. See that? That's symbolic of the Gentiles. Okay? The blind and the lame are those who are received back to the Most High through Yahweh Shai, all right, even in a deformed state. All right, because according to that first covenant, these things would keep you from being a priest. Right. Now, the Lord is raising up a holy and spiritual priesthood. Right. And a lot of us. All right. In spirit, we're blind, we were lame and we had these particular infirmities. All right. But contrary to the qualifications of that first covenant. We're able to be priest and partake of the holiest of holy things, the hidden manna. All right. Likened into that, that, that bread that was on the altar that was changed out every Sabbath day by the high priest. They would eat of those things. If you had particular infirmities, you couldn't eat of those things. 
All right. But under Yahweh Shai, the blind and the lame. All right. Can partake of the holy of, of, of holy things. We can be priest. All right. And it's not after the order of Aaron, but it's after the order of Melchizedek through Yahweh Shai, which his blood covers our sins. That's why the mercies of David is associated with having your sins covered. So let's read this again. Jeremiah 31 and 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travail with child together and a great company shall return thither. Showing you, you're going to have particular women with our seeds at the time Yahweh shall return that are going to be delivered. All right, however the Lord does that. But there you go, the blind and the lame. Okay, and that's ultimately... The mercies of David. All right. Because what is the mercies of David? As a matter of fact, let's get that real quick. And Isaiah 55. All right. Isaiah 55. And three, incline your ear and come unto me and hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Okay. What are the sure mercies of David? Let's get it. Psalms 32. Okay. So when you hear the blame, all right, the, the, the lame, the blind, all right, what made you lame and blind is that ultimately, according to that first covenant, you couldn't partake of particular things. So according to that covenant, you as an Israelite were cut off. Due to these technicalities, this is why the scriptures say Yahweh Shai redeemed us from the curse of the law. It was Israel that needed to be redeemed back to the Father, but through technicalities, all right, a lot were pretty much cut off. And this is the beauty of Yahweh Shai. Psalms 32 and 1 Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. See that? Whose sin is put out of sight because real quick, we'll go right back to that. But let's get Psalms 130. One of my favorite to bring out. So those lame and halted and blind, those were Israelites. All right. Who were in these regions. All right. But ultimately, you know, they were cast off. They were they were cut. They were they were they were done. They had no hope. But as Yahweh came on the scene, he started to heal all right, these castaways and deal with them. And you had those of the circumcision like, man, why in the hell are you dealing with these castaways? Yuck. You know, and then eventually it had to be taught. All right, starting with, you know, uh, Paul. All right, and it had to ultimately go through Peter first, dealing with Cornelius, the mercies of David. As Peter is David. It had to be taught that, look, these Gentiles, you know, they're now accepted back in. Boy, and that, you know, led to a lot of controversy. But let's get this. Psalms 130 and 3. If thou, Yahweh, shouldest mark iniquities, O Yahweh, who shall stand? So read that in the NLT. Lord, if you kept the record of our sins, O Lord, who would ever survive? How would we partake of the holy things? How could we be a spiritual priesthood? As a matter of fact, let's get that. In First Peter and we'll go back to where we were. First Peter's two. Okay. First Peter's chapter two. All right, living stones for God's house. First Peter's two and four. To coming, to whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Speaking of Yahweh Shai. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, according to that first covenant, we would not. All right. Qualify to be priests. First of all, we're not of the, you know, none of us can prove we're of the, the seed of Aaron right there. That cuts us off. And that means we have no way back because the priesthood represented what reconciliation. Okay, so what Yahweh Shai did for this nation of people is big. <laughs> All right, for us, as now we have a holy 
spiritual house, a spiritual priesthood, everything under the first covenant. First, you had the tabernacle that was built by Moses. All right. In it, you had the, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the holy of holies, holies, where the priest commune with the most high on what we should do as Israelites. All right. You had the angel hovering over communing with the priest on behalf of the most high God, Yahweh. Okay. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. Then you had the temple at the time of Solomon that was built. All right. Which was the mercies of David of that time. Okay. Which pretty much, you know, David received mercy. He was his, his kingdom was able to be forwarded and the temple was able to be built by Solomon. All right. And his sins were what? Blotted out. See, because David committed what? According to that first covenant, David should not have been alive. All right. He murdered a man, had a man murdered pretty much. He committed adultery. OK, and he numbered Israel without being commanded to see Moses was commanded to number Israel. David did it out of his own you know, the uh, belly. All right. And the one he sent to do it knew he was going off. <laughs> All right. But right here, through the mercies of David, we now are able to have a spiritual priesthood. Offering up spiritual sacrifices, then what are we offering up? Okay, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, if we went into the technicalities of that first covenant, all right, we would be considered unfit to be priest, all of us. Even you who know you're of the, you know, seed of Levi. Okay. Going back. First Peter's two and five. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go to verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. OK. And now all 12 tribes can be priests in, in our uncircumcised state. All right. In our unholy, these unholy vessels. All right. The Lord is able to deal with us through Yahweh Shai. All right. And be covered under his blood. Ye are a chosen generation and, and ultimately what justifies us is Yahweh Shai's blood but being chosen from the foundation of the earth okay but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light which in times past were not a people now, why weren't we a people in times past? Because according to the covenant, we were cut off. When you go to the technicalities of that covenant, you are cut off. That's why I said the letter killeth. Let's get that. Okay. Let's get this real quick. And I'm going to read this in the NLT. I'm going to go fast. Second Corinthians three and one. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? All right. As if we're justified by the flesh. Are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation or who ask you to write such letters on their behalf? Surely not. We don't need the praises of men. It says, the only letter of recommendation we need is yourselves, all right? You are a living testimony. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. As we see the Gentile, the, you know, the Israelites raising up out of that Gentile state, that's enough. All right? That's the spirit. That's, the, that's prophecy being fulfilled. It says, clearly you are a letter from Hamashiach, showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is not written. This letter is written not with pen and ink, 
but with the spirit of the living God, it is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. All right. Now, the first covenant, all right, was given by Moses. All right. As the heavenly father had it, you know, through his right hand scribed on stone. OK, see, the, the, the covenant we're entering into is where it'll be written in our minds. And it starts here with us being what? Called out of darkness through the Holy Spirit by the high priest in the heavens, washed and cleansed, not by physical water, but by what? The, the, the Holy Spirit, which is likened unto water through the teaching of the word. The filth is washed. That's a physical. That's a spiritual circumcision. See, you had those who were physically circumcised of the penis who could physically had all of the qualifications to be a priest, but their minds wasn't right. OK, it says we are confident of all of this because of our great trust in God through Hamashiach. See, it's through Yahawashai now. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. See, we're not qualified to be priest on our own. We're, we're qualified to go out there and teach our people as priests, because that's ultimately what the Lord has raised up, a, whole, a spiritual priest. So we're qualified through the Most High, through Yahweh Shai. It says he has enabled us to be ministers of the new covenant, teachers of the new covenant. We're teaching the new covenant is coming. The old covenant is done. Okay. That's not what made you see under that covenant. And you had to do the laws in order to be justified. Okay. And if you didn't, you were cursed, you were cut off. We're ministering unto you, the new covenant in this grace period we have. It says, this is a covenant, not of written laws, but of the spirit. All right. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. And that's through your Shai. You see, the old covenant ended in death because ultimately we would not have a priesthood again. We would be through. How would we have a connection with our father without a physical earthly tabernacle? The old covenant ends in death. If you don't, if you work on the Sabbath, you're cut off from among your people. Okay. If you're not circumcised, you're cut off from among your people. All of these things under that first covenant kept us, all right, from getting back to the Father. We needed Yahweh Shai. Even you who are walking around with fringes on, you need Yahweh Shai. You cannot be justified by that first covenant. There's no way. Okay? So Yahweh Shai redeemed us from the curse of that first covenant, the curse of the law. Okay. The old covenant ends with death, the letter kill it. That's why. Okay. The Lord has done us a service by raising up a spiritual priesthood. We don't have a physical temple. We are Jerusalem, wherever we are. What does Jerusalem represent? What a temple was? What does the temple represent? Our connection with our power, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob dealt with us through earthly tabernacles in times past. See, now he's dealing with us, the believers, directly through Yahweh Shai, through the gift he sent down to men, which ultimately, as this scripture says here, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, Psalms 130 and 3, who would stand? Psalms 32 and 1. Psalm of David, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom Yahweh imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no God because see you're going to be justified by your spirit which was chosen from the foundation of the earth to be blameless what's that uh Ephesians okay Ephesians 1 Ephesians 1 and three, blessed be the God of the and the Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach. See, that's where our blessing it goes really back to the foundation of the earth, being chosen all the way back then, according as He have chosen us 
in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. If, if we were still under that first covenant, we would be blamed. We needed this grace period. Okay. And it all started with John the Baptist going and preaching Yahweh Shai, as his name means grace. And now we have a grace period to where we can be justified and fulfill prophecy without having to worry about the technicalities of the first covenant, which kills us, which cuts us off. So the predestination being Yahweh Shai's blood, it covers us now, as it says in the fourth chapter, Ephesians 4 and 7, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Amashiach. Wherefore, he said he has, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men because under that first covenant, we were, we were held captive. We were done. Okay, we, we would never have gotten back to the father, but he led captivity captive by doing what? Giving gifts unto men the high priest in the heavens, okay? Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Now we know he ascended back to the father and that's his initial position, but he had to come down on the earth first and do duties, okay? And the main duty, all right, because he fell as Adam, he fell as Solomon, the main duty ultimately was to what? be a sacrifice to redeem us back to the father, that perfect sacrifice. He fulfilled the duties of the, the high priest. He fulfilled the duties of the, the lamb required. He was the morning and evening sacrifice. He did it all. All right. In his flesh, as he came through the loins and lineage of David, it says he that descended is the same also that ascended up for afar above all things that he might feel all things. All right. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. That is the gift through the Holy Spirit that will be bestowed upon the men of the Lord to raise up. This is that holy priesthood. Contrary to the first covenant where you had to be from the loins and lineage of, of Aaron, from the loins and lineage of Levi through Aaron, you had to have a temple, okay? If we were dependent on that now, we die. We all, we would be cut off forever. But see, when he ascended, well, after his sacrifice, he was able to go back up into the heavens and now from the holy tabernacle in the heavens, he can send down the Holy Spirit and commune with the men of the Lord as priest in this time, as we're in an uncircumcised state, as we're in a state carnally, fleshly, that will pollute us from even be having any contact with our power. Through Yahweh Shai, now we can have contact with our power. And it's for the Israelites. That's why it specifically says the lame and the blind and the halted. Okay. So he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. So the Lord has set up a holy priesthood, all right, contrary to how the priesthood was set up under that first covenant, and it's all through Yahweh Shai. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh So when you look at what he did, okay, he did a big thing. So the elect, the remnant are going to come together through the preaching of that word. Okay. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. And we know only the elect are going to come into the unity of the faith. And the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man, unto a measure of a stature and of the fullness of a Mashiach. Yahweh Shai, man, he's the man. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Shai. And see, a lot of, Israelites don't really understand what Yahweh Shai means for us. Okay? He, they don't understand. And let's see here.
And this is, oh, uh, Psalms 51, real quick. Psalms 51. Okay, I know I'm a bit all over the place, but Lord willing, you, you're being uh, edified. Psalms 51. Yep. And we're the house of David. So we represent David in a sense. We're the children of Abraham. We represent Abraham in a sense. All right. As we, we, you know, David, according to technicalities, he needed justification. He needed, he needed, you know, another priesthood. All right. And then the Lord had Solomon to be born. That was a beautiful thing because David technically should have been dead. So in this chapter, this is after he's called out for them sins he did, committed adultery. We know the penalty of adultery. Okay. He's he 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 ultimately was crying unto the Lord to forgive him, to wash him. Okay, and put dumping himself in water at this time could not the, the, the only way he could have been justified after those sins was through <laughs> All right, from the it was it had to be the mercy. That's why it's called the mercies of David. The only way we can be justified and uh, uh, considered clean is through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because look at our, our flesh, man. We're filthy. We're we're not sovereign. We can't fully keep the laws perfectly. Some of us do have physical issues in our body. That would pollute. That would pollute you from the priesthood. You couldn't. Offer up as you couldn't partake of the holy things. And we need to partake of the holy things to have a relationship with our father. So the water, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, because we don't have a temple. That's why the beauty, the, the beauty of it is we're Jerusalem. And the brother brought out a precept. I'll jump to that next. But, um. David is asking the Lord to cleanse him. Purge me with thy hyssop, which was a, a cleansing agent, but the hyssop is in the spirit. At the time of the Passover, the hyssop is what purified the blood. See, the blood that covers us now was, was purified by the Most High himself through Yahweh Shai, man. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. This is not anything that can be done in the flesh. Dumping yourself in water cannot cleanse you this way. Okay? But here's the point that I'm trying to get away with. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then teach. Then will I teach the transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And that's what we're doing. All through the mercies of David. Verse 16 is what I want. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. And that would be through a high priest. He would have to go to a high priest and be forgiven that way. Okay? For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. See? The Lord, he got fed up with our sacrifices. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Okay? A broken and contrite heart. All right? O oh God, will thou not despise? So you got to repent and come wholeheartedly back. Okay, do good. All right, in thy good pleasure unto Zion, build thou the walls of Jerusalem, which that's where the temple was. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering, and a whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. And what is that? That's us in these latter days repenting. We couldn't, we, we can't fulfill that first covenant because we don't have a temple. So it's through Yahweh Shai. Now we're making our bodies a living sacrifice, as it said we would do in Isaiah the 19th chapter. We're the lame, the blind, the halted. According to that covenant, you were uh, 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 considered a castaway. So those were Israelites, man. I know I kind of went off into a whole tangent away from the original point, but it all links. Isaiah 19, okay, in 19, in that day shall there be an altar unto the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, 
and a pillar to the border thereof. And it shall be for a sign and a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. This is that Egypt we were brought back into the final captivity ran by the Edomites. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of their oppressors. All right. And he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them. So there you go. That altar is what? Us offering up our bodies a living sacrifice in the land of Egypt. Where we were brought as captives. Okay. Where our, our, our brothers, the northern kingdom, were slaughtered, pillaged, raped, robbed, murdered as a punishment by Esau, Edom, and the heathen, man. There will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Let's get that precept the brother brought out. see here Let's see here yep e Ezekiel 5 and 5 thus said the Lord of hosts this is Jerusalem I have set it in the midst of the nations in the countries around about her okay so Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. And in Jerusalem was that temple where you would go get cleansed, where you would go to the high priest to be brought back to, for reconciliation. So now Jerusalem is what? Exactly the, 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 the scattered churches that are being raised up here in these latter days, man. Okay, so going back to the original point, just bringing it all back home. <clears throat> okay. The blind and the lame, okay, as you can see here, Malachi 1 and 8, because the priests were doing wickedness back then, it says, if ye offer the blind for a sacrifice, is it not evil? If ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it not unto thy governor, will he be displeased with thee or accept thy person? Uh, that was a, a big thing, but the priests were doing that. They were taking sacrifices they know wouldn't be acceptable and, and offering them up. But in spirit, according to that first covenant, you the, the, the sacrifice would have to be perfect. But in flesh, we're not perfect. We're perfected through Yahweh Shai. This is what it was speaking of, the lame and the blind, the dumb being healed by Yahweh Shai. Those were Israelites who, according to that covenant, were cast away. OK, so through grace, they're cleansed and brought into the new covenant. OK, so that's the understanding of the lame, the blind. Those are Israelites. These were Israelites that were being healed by Yahweh. No heathen was under that covenant. OK, let's finish it off with the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter. OK, Galatians, the fourth chapter. All right. Let's start at three. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. All right. This can be looked at as children of understanding. All right. Being in bondage to the understanding only of the first covenant and not how it all led to Yahweh Shai and the prophecies of grace coming into the, 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 the Israelite foreigners, the Gentiles. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. The, those who were under the law needed to be redeemed because according to those laws. All right. Curse of the law. Let's get that. Let's, okay, let's read this in Daniel 9 and 11. Perfect. Yea, all Israel transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the course curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written, all right, in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Those curses that were written in the law of Moses, all right, came upon us, and they're still upon us. Okay? But see, what Yahweh did, Okay, 
Galatians 3 and 10, for as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse. So if you, if you seek to be justified by the law, then we need to go into the law and look at every technicality and your ass is cursed forever. You're forever cut off. You need Yahweh Shai. Okay, for it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. You're cursed under that first covenant. You had to be obedient to those laws. If not, you are under a curse. But no man shall be justified by the law, proving to you that these are Israelites. In order for these Gentile converts to have been justified by the law as the, the circumcision were trying to push, they would have to be Israelites anyway. But no man is justified in the law by the law in the sight of God, for it is evident the just shall live by faith. All right. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. For Hamashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse from us. Reading this in the NLT. But Hamashiach has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. See that? That what? The blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahweh Shai, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith, the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, we can now be restored to the promised land, which we will. All right. Even though we're in an uncircumcised state, even though we're not perfect according to that covenant through the mercies of David, which is, I believe, brought up earlier in this chapter. Or it's brought up at some point, but through the mercies of David and the faith of Abraham, who he was uncircumcised, according to the covenant, if you want to go by that first covenant, Abraham should be cut off. Why? Because he was uncircumcised. All right, but he's justified, <laughs> all right? So he would have been looked at as a lame, you know, but the, the heavenly father worked with him. So I just wanted to deal with that. Other points are coming into my mind, but the point was made. Any points or precepts, put them on the comment board. Shalom.